Hello everyone, my name is Wayne Johnson, this is Passion for Life Gallery. Today I want to introduce you to two paintings that my wife has completed. On my left is Winter Moon, a scene from Northern British Columbia in Canada, and on my right is a scene from Is Solitude, and it's a scene from the coast of Ecuador. Completely different parts of the world, but what we're focusing on today is in fact the frame around them. These are what we call floating frames. Picture sits inside and there's a small gap around them. So the object of this video is going to be able to, is, is to show you how to make these frames. Now I'm claiming that these floating frames are much easier to make than what you'll see in most of the videos here on YouTube. And as you follow this video, you will see why I believe that. This one on my left has got a natural finish with a painted gold trim around it. It's not real gold, unfortunately. And the one on the right has actually got a rounded surface, a rounded edge, and is painted gloss black. So there's lots of options that you can do with this uh, if you want. So hope you enjoy this video, and I hope you learned something. As always, if you like the content, hit the like button, and please subscribe. And as always, Thanks for watching. Okay, so now that we're in our shop, we can get started making our floating frames. I've chosen to make these frames out of half inch plywood. Now there's a few reasons for that. The advantage of plywood is that you've already got two surfaces perfectly flat parallel to one another. If you're using real wood, you could buy wood half inch thick. Chances are you won't be able to find it. You're going to have to join it and thickness plane it down to size. That requires extra equipment. With plywood, you need a table saw and maybe a chop saw and you can get straight to work. Now the disadvantage of plywood, the main disadvantage is this edge. Uh, because you got to cover it up. If you want a natural look, you could put edge banding on there. If you're going to put edge banding on it, you want to do that before you cut your miters. I'm going to be painting this, and so I will show you later on how we're going to deal with this edge. But for now, I've got plywood cut to two inches wide. Now, the reason it's two inches wide is that my stretchers are an inch and a half. Exactly an inch and a half. And the base that I'm going to be using to attach the stretcher to the floating frame is 3 8 So that's going to leave my picture just shy of the surface. But in fact, because there's quite often on the back side some folded cloth, it's going to push it very close to, this, to equal to the front surface of my plywood. So I've got enough pieces cut to do this frame, which is 40 by 50. Now your frame could be a different size. You're going to have to cut them accordingly. I've also got larger pieces here I'm going to be cutting for, yeah, for a stretcher. 50 by 70 millimeters. Hey, I just want to interrupt here for a moment. I used the expression millimeters a few times in this video when I actually mean centimeters. Clearly they're not the same. It's just the switching back and forth from standard to metric. My brain gets a little confused. Sorry about that. Anyways, just thought I'd let you know. Thanks. It's approximately 20 by 28. So the next step in the process would be simply to cut the miters on these. Make note of what your good side is, your bad side, if there is one, put the bad side to the inside. I'm going to explain a little bit more exactly how I set up to cut the miters, and some things we have to follow at that stage. So we'll move over to the table saw now. So before we cut our miters, I just want to point out a couple of things that are very important. Now these would apply whether you're using a chop saw or as I am here using a sled on a table saw. The main thing I wanted to point out was the blade needs to be perpendicular 
to your sled, to the table saw, obviously, to your sled. These fences need to be absolutely perpendicular. Otherwise, your fence, your miters are not going to be straight. So that's the first thing you want to check. The second principle is I use clamps like this to hold the wood in place while I'm cutting it. Whether on a chop saw or a sled like this, if the wood moves, you're not going to have an accurate cut, especially since we're cutting a miter on something that's two inches high. Very important. So I do that on both sides. I have here a scrap piece which has a miter cut on it. I'm just going to focus in because I want to show you exactly how I'm measuring this to get an accurate cut. So I've taken a measurement whether it be 40 millimeters in this case, 50 or 70, exactly where the saw blade meets the fence, which is right there. So what I do is I find my 40 millimeter mark, and then I've made a mark on the fence at exactly that location. So I've got the tape measure set to 40 millimeters from where it intersects with the blade. And then I'm going to add for my stop 3 eighths of an inch. Forty millimeters plus three eighths of an inch. And I've made a mark here. I've actually already got a mark, as you can see there. The three eighths of an inch is to account for the gap that's around the frame. Divide that in half, it's about three sixteenths. So I'm gonna have a gap around my frame of more or less an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths. Then I'm gonna take the scrap piece that I have with the angle already cut on it as you can see, and I'm going to put the inside edge of that miter right where that line is, and then I'm going to put my stop there, and make sure it's clamped down. So by setting it up this way, I can ensure that the distance between the inside edge of my miter is going to accommodate my picture. That is the most important thing. So I've got my stop in place for the 40 millimeter, for 40 millimeter. I have the exact same marks set up for 50 and for 70. So all I have to do now is go ahead and cut the miters. So now I've got all of my miters cut to the right length. Normally the next process is to assemble this, get it glued up, maybe use a couple of nails, and then we would have to make a frame to go inside of that. So then you'd have your miter set up like this, and you'd have to cut another piece on flat with miters to fit inside of that after it's been assembled. But I'm going to show you a simpler way. I want to introduce to you what I'm calling the ace brace. Actually, it's just a corner brace. The point is, is that as we're assembling this, we're going to install these corner braces, like so, on the bottom edge. Now, the advantage of this is obvious to me. All you have to assure with these 
is, is that this is cut at 90 degrees. These corners don't matter. This has to be at 90 degrees. So we don't have to measure an exact miter to fit inside our picture frame. We just have to cut four of these. There's a JPEG available for these on our website. There's a link below. You can click on that and download it. The length of the long side is one half the length of the long frame from the inside to inside, approximately. It does not have to be exact as long as it is close to half. The main thing is you don't want these to hit one another, so I usually trim these corners back just a little bit on either end. I have to do that yet. So we'll see when I, you'll see when I assemble them exactly how these are going to work. Now the purpose of the hole is going to be to clamp these together. The purpose of these two notches, which are half holes, is again a place to put the clamps, which will become very clear once I begin to install them. So what I'll do now is I'm going to show you how we cut these, and then we're going to glue it up. Okay, so I just want to explain something at this moment that is very important. I've cut the basic squares for those brackets to length. It's important at this point that I get the edges and the sides at exactly 90 degrees. So I'm going to recut, starting with one edge, both sides and the opposite to make sure they're absolutely square, and I'll be checking them with a square as I go along. So we're going to do that now. I've got my pieces for the two frames cut perfectly square. I've marked the corners that are the square and I've also drawn a diagonal across here. And according to the diagram I showed you earlier, I put marks, indications for the holes. These two are not critical as long as they're back from the edge a couple of inches. That's fine. We'll see, I'll show you uh, later on, we'll see exactly why those holes are there. The holes on the pattern that are here need to be coming up 45 degrees from the corner. That way when you clamp it together, you'll be pulling directly. It's not critical, but it makes clamping a lot easier. So I have my gauge set to 45 degrees. And I'm just going to mark these lines so they're coming up directly. I have to do every corner. And I'm also going to mark the indication where I want my hole. Again, it only needs to be about two to three inches back from the corner. I would say two and a half to three is probably ideal. Okay, so those are all marked. All that's left to do is drill the holes. I'm using a one inch spade bit. Could use a Forstner bit on a drill press. Uh, but I'm going to use this with a block underneath to protect my workbench. Got all my holes drilled. What I'm going to do, is, what I'll do now is I'll move over to the table saw and I'll cut these on the diagonal.
Okay, so I've got all of my triangles cut. As you can see, I've got two different sizes, one for the smaller frame, one for the larger frame. So I've got my pieces ready. I'm going to start with the smaller sized frame. And as always, as I've demonstrated in some of my other videos, I've got these small clamps, corner clamps set up. This one is fixed. This one, I can move it around to adjust to the length. And so the idea is I'm going to assemble these using the clamps on the corners. And then we're going to add our corner braces. And we're going to do that in one process. Now when I glue up the corners, I'm going to be clamping together with these clamps as well as clamps on the top. I've demonstrated that in other videos. You have an option here of putting a couple of brad nails so that you can keep moving around the frame and not having to wait for the glue on these to dry. If you don't want brad nails in these corners, then after you apply the top clamps, you're simply going to have to wait. If you have eight of them, you can do all the corners, wait for a couple of hours, come back and reassemble. Uh, I'm going to put a couple of brad nails. I'm going to do two corners at a time, revolve, uh, turn the frame, and then keep going. So I'm going to zoom the camera in, get a better angle, so you can see exactly how I'm doing this. Okay, so I'm going to walk you base through the basic process of clamping these up. The process involves setting these in the clamps and just adjusting each clamp so that you get a perfectly tight miter here. Okay, and then I'm going to use the clamp on top after I put my glue on to get the top exactly right. Uh, so sometimes in behind, you can't see that, but in behind here there's little tiny shims, very, very thin. I'm using a piece of a credit card, in fact to just shim that out so you get a perfect corner. So I have my brad nail ready with one inch nails. I'm going to put some glue on this now. Generous bead of glue. Put my corner in, sure that it's lined up. And then I'm just going to snug that up. I've got a perfect miter. And I'm going to take the top clamp on the top. I'm going to attempt to do the same thing by pulling it together and clamping it. So as you can see, I've got a really nice fit there. And then I'm just going to add a couple of one inch brads right in the corners. Okay, so I've got my brad nails in there. Now I'm going to release the top clamp. Brad nail will hold it in place. And here's where our handy dandy corner braces are gonna come in. So that's how our frame's going in. So first thing I'm going to do, add a little bit of glue. On both edges. And remember, this is the long side, this is the short side, so I want the long side. On the long side, short side, and the short side. I'm going to get a clamp ready. I've got a various styles of clamps here, quick clamps, etc. So when I place this in the corner, first thing I want to do, make sure that it's level with the edge of this. I'm just going to put a clamp on here to hold that while I'm getting the corner ready. Okay, so that's just sitting there. Now I'm going to be using these corner clamps. I just made these out of a couple of pieces of wood, mitered it exactly to uh, 45 to form a 90 degree with some bracing. The idea is that these are going to go on here like this and I'm going to put a clamp in the center. Now 
main thing is this has to be up at the top and you want the clamp pulling straight through the middle so as you're doing this make sure that this clamp is also horizontal otherwise it's not going to be 90 degrees so I'm going to clamp that tight and as I do that pulling everything together nicely and then I want to put another clamp on this corner as well everything is level everything is tight so that's the basic process now this corner when it dries will be completely solid it's not going to move I hope you can appreciate now as well the reason for the holes here and here just to accommodate the clamp of course this one is for the corner clamp. So I'm going to progress around the frame. Okay, so this is how it looks when I'm finished. Clamps everywhere. Um, I'll wait till it completely sets up before I take it apart. And then I've still got my long one to assemble. I don't know if you'll catch it in the uh, footage, but I actually cut one of these when I trimmed the corners off. As you can see here, I trimmed the corners off. One of them was still a little bit too long. Don't know how that happened. But I had to run over to the bench, cut it off with a handsaw come back and put it glue it in but anyway just make sure that before you glue them in that they're actually uh, cut to the right size okay so when this is dried up we will continue with the uh, finishing process I don't know if I'm going to include that in this video or if I'm going to put that into a final video exactly how I finish the edges and paint it etc like that but we'll see how long this video is to start with okay Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video. Hey everyone. So yes, I decided to do another video, a second part on how I finish the frames and paint them. I think this video is already long enough. So stay tuned for that. If you like this kind of content, hit the like button. Please subscribe. Talk to you soon.